ah, beautiful plants, beautiful flowers, nothing but lovely scenery to see in our Ohio plants course. Not a lot of technical stuff like in uh, biology, uh, 11, 13, 11, 14. Ah, chromosomes. No, no. Wait, you'll like it. Chromosomes are good. Uh, we need to learn about chromosomes because we need to learn about life cycles so we understand the beautiful sporophytes and gametophytes that we see on the plants in our Ohio fields and meadows and forests. <sighs> chromosomes. Um, as you know, um, chromosomes are basically DNA molecules. And the thing to notice about to know about them is that they are um, genetic instructions. Each organism has a characteristic number of chromosomes. Humans, famously, have 23. Or is it 46? I always forget. No, I don't really forget. Um, there are 23 chromosomes in one set, one genome, and cells that, um, and organisms that are haploid, it really should be monoploid, uh, abbreviated 1N, um, have one set of chromosomes. And for animals, that only means or uh, only is characteristic of gametes, eggs, and sperm. And all the other cells of our body are diploid, meaning having two sets of chromosomes, two complete packages of genetic instructions. It's abbreviated 2N, and um, that is uh, an important feature that distinguishes certain plant and other organism life cycles. So, um, a little more elegant uh, version of the same thing. Once again, um, haploid describes cells or organisms that have one set of chromosomes. And diploid um, describes cells or organisms that have two sets of chromosomes. We'll keep that in mind when we look at different stages of life cycles. So, when we look at what we're going to learn is three life cycles. The three life cycles. This is really very complete and comprehensive. It's all of the different life cycles for sexually reproducing organisms, organisms that divide their genetic material into half and combine them in new individuals with an equal contribution from each parent. And um, first we need to direct our attention to um, processes. These are nuclear division processes. And mitosis, you'll recall, um, is a nuclear division process that is basically cloning, uh, produces two uh, genetically identical nuclei. And um, for example, if you cut yourself and the, and the skin grows back, um, that process by which that happens is mitosis. So mitosis can um, proceed by having a du diploid nucleus uh, divide into forming two more diploid nuclei. And that's what we're kind of used to. It's also what happens when a fertilized egg develops into an embryo. And um, a, a, that's uh, mitosis. What you might not be familiar with, because it doesn't happen in animal life cycles and so it doesn't get talked about as much, is it's possible for a diploid nucleus, I'm sorry, I misspoke, for a haploid nucleus to divide into two identical haploid nuclei. Um, and that's something that happens in fungi and plants. This is the, maybe the first surprising thing in this um, unit on life cycles. Meiosis is um, a nuclear division um, that is, uh, has a nickname. Um, it's called um, reductive division. And what's reduced is the number of chromosomes. It's neatly cut exactly in half. Not just um, any half, but it's the um, one of each kind of chromosome in the pairs of what are called homologous chromosomes. And uh, meiosis, you're familiar with it, uh, most people are familiar with it, as being the process by which gametes are produced in animals. So uh, in that instance, and all other instances, you go from having a diploid nucleus to, it just so happens, um, because of some peculiarities involving um, chromosome morphology, four haploid nuclei. And um, uh, this is the process by which um, gametes are formed, eggs and sperm, in animals, and also the process by which, um, in fact we can label these, um, it, it, um, 
gametes in animals, or as we will see, spores in organisms that produce spores. So, um, speaking of which, um, gametes zygote spore. What kind of cells are there in life cycles? There are um, gametes. So let's be very strict and explicit when we define a gamete. A gamete is a, a single a haploid cell. Um, and it, what it does is it fuses, as you know, um, with another gamete to complete the life cycle. And so examples of gametes, and it's almost the complete list, uh, are sperm um, and eggs. And I say it's almost the complete list because there are some organisms that have gametes that don't differ in size and they're called isogamous, some algae are like that, and there's still haploid cells that fuse together to form, um, to, form uh, a, 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 to form a zygote, a fertilized egg, that's what that arrow means, but um, they're not um, uh, male and female as such per se. And the only difference between male and female is that females are organisms that produce large, non-motile, typically, um, always, uh, gametes and males are organisms that produce multiple small motile motile gametes and that's that's the difference and a uh, zygote uh, is a single cell but it's a fertilized egg um, fertilized egg um, it's and it results from the is it results in the fusion of the gametes stuff we already know but um, the possible new thing is a spore and a spore when we define a spore it starts out sounding like a gamete in that it's a single haploid cell. Hmm, sounds like a gamete. Um, but it's kind of a loner. A spore um, it doesn't fuse with anything. Um, it develops into um, a, new, uh, a new organism. I mean, by the way, the new organism is, uh, I think I'll write it up here. I like to put the adjectives before the nouns because I'm American and speak English. A new haploid organism uh, all by itself. Um, exclamation point make it look exciting Woot. and that is um, that is what a spore is a spore is a way to make new organisms that are multicellular haploid organisms which is sort of another surprise of um, what we're learning today so here's a little more elegant version of what we just said um, typed out um, mitosis is basically cloning it's basically um, producing identical nuclei um, carbon copy uh, Xerox machine uh, rubber stamp, um, uh, cloning, uh, meiosis, which is incidentally the a necessary step for sexual reproduction. Meiosis is the hallmark of sexual reproduction. It's um, necessary. If organisms are going to combine their genetic material that they cut the number of chromosomes in half. Otherwise, the offspring would have twice as many chromosomes as either parent, and that would be a big mess even after one generation. So. In order to have biparental sexual reproduction, you need to have meiosis. So meiosis is the key step in sexual reproduction. And as we already mentioned, but here it's easier to read, but I'll change, I'll, but, but I'll, I'll fix that with this pen by scribbling all over it, um, is the gamete is a, a haploid cell that fuses with another gamete. And sperm and egg are gam gametes. Um, a zygote is the result from the fusion of gametes and the spore as we already said is um, a loner haploid cell that becomes the new multicellular haploid organism all by itself okay so um, we're going to learn three life cycles we're particularly interested we're actually really learning learning the plant life cycle because that's what the ohio plants is about and the uh, best way to understand the plant life cycle is to see it in the context of other life cycles and so we're going to be really comprehensive here and draw three life cycles. And in our drawings, um, horizontal line goes across the page. Everything above the line is diploid. And everything below the line is monoploid. No, they don't call it that. They call it haploid. Haploid. And so we're going to have a convention here um, where we have large balloony like circles represent multicellular organisms and little tiny circles or dots represent individual cells arrows represent um, processes and 
every so often we'll have dotted lines that are for labels. So um, here's a, a big balloony like circle, and this will be a, a male animal, and this will be a female animal. And somewhere on his body and somewhere on her body are structures within which meiosis takes place. And animals, these are called gonads. And gonads will be o either ovaries or testes, depending which animal it is. And um, these are stru structures within which meiosis takes place. So let's see. I'm going to, here we go. Um, we'll be drawing the arrows represent processes. Uh, nuclear di nuclear division processes. So this is meiosis, meiosis, the reductive division by which um, haploid cells are produced. So this is the female. And so these drawings, by the way, are diagrammatic. Um, perhaps this female releases her eggs into the, if, uh, into the environment if she's a frog, say. But that's not what this is meant to depict. It just meant to depict the transformations. Um, so these are eggs, and these are sperm. I always like to draw a few spin the wrong way just for fun. <laughs> and uh, these are sperm. And these are, so collectively they are called gametes. This is review, I hope. And so we have them fused together, a process called fertilization, sometimes called syngamy. And uh, we have to go back across the line again because now we have a zygote, a fertilized egg, which is a diploid cell resulting re that results from the fusion of the gametes. And so this arrow is mitosis, where the fertilized egg develops into an embryo and then a grown-up uh, animal. Anima? <laughs> animal. Ta-da! So that's the um, animal life cycle that is somewhat familiar. Uh, here's a more elegant picture of it showing oh, it's just easier to read that's all boom here's a diagram from a textbook that shows the animal life cycle uh, it shows pictures of people with uh, meiosis showing the eggs and the sperm and the fertilization and yeah you know this picture kind of makes me uncomfortable this is um uh, the the nudity oh my so I actually this is going to be a, might be on YouTube you know and it's supposed to be family friendly so I modified it and uh, they, they, uh, they have, um, they're, they're, they're now they're more modest. And if you look really carefully right here, they have, there's a wedding ring. So they're properly married. I feel much better now. I'm actually getting paid for this. Uh, let's take a look at, oh, wait, I'm going to go back. Boop, boop, boop. Um, I want to emphasize this um, word, diplontic. Sometimes the animal life cycle is called a diplontic life cycle because the dominant stage in the life cycle that, um, is diploid. Right. The weird algae fungus life cycle is sometimes called haplontic because, as we will see, um, uh, and which is why I say it's weird, um, we have multicellular haploid individuals. So here we have the same convention where everything above the line is dip and everything below the line is happen <laughs> and let's go below the line where all the action happens um, we're going to draw two big balloons and one of them is a uh, a male whatever uh, let's say algae and the other one is a female algae and again these are conceptual diagrams it doesn't mean to imply that these algae are necessarily unisexual, have separate sexes. They might not. They, in fact, they probably don't, but they could. Somewhere on the algae's body is a structure within which gametes are produced. Um, it's not the same as what's on the animal, so it has a different name. And what it's called is a gametangium. So what we have here is a convention, another convention. And these are my dots, lighted lines are labeling arrows. Um, a gametangium, which um, the ngium suffix is a structure within which the first part of the word are produced. And um, 
let's carry this a little further because we're interested in technical stuff. Um, this female Gamatangian, whoops, sorry guys. I just apologize to diagrammatic textbook people. <laughs> yes. Um, is um, it's called an archi... <laughs> Stop that. The problem is that this computer has the touch screen. I explained that before, didn't I? Um, hmm. What's the solution? If I touch this, there we go. Um, it's called an archegonium. Um, the same way that ovaries and testes are named for particular uh, um, uh, gonads, um, uh, archegonium is the name for the egg-producing gametangium, and the antheridium is the name of the male gametangium. So um, anth, like anthropology, man, I don't know. And then um, archegonium, Joan of Arc, I don't know. Um, so those are the, the gamut, the specific gametangia are, uh, uh, archegonium has eggs and antheridium makes sperm. And the sort of surprising thing, uh, because I think you have it drummed into your head that gametes are produced by meiosis. No, not so. If you are haploid to begin with, then the process by which the gametes are produced is mitosis. Haploid nuclei dividing by cloning, basically, to produce um, um, sperm and eggs. I'll draw a few sperm, and I'll draw a few eggs, and I'll just write gametes here. Gametes produced by mitosis. That's kind of weird, and they fuse together by a process uh, called fertilization. And what they produce is, of course, a zygote, um, fertilized egg. And the surprising thing about the haplontic life cycle is that the only stage of the life cycle that's diploid is the zygote. Um, what happens next might not happen right away. It might happen after a this a stressful period like a dry period is um, overcome in a resting stage but the next developmental thing that happens is that the zygote undergoes meiosis and um, me meiosis you'll recall is um, a process by which one two three four I'm very deliberately drawing four spores here um, because it's only one cell and it's going to undergo meiosis to produce four spores. And these spores are in the lower half of the line because they are haploid. They develop by mitosis to form new haploid, uh, haploid individuals. So this is kind of a weird life cycle. Uh, gametes produced by mitosis. Whoa. Uh, multicellular haploid organisms. What? The only diploid stage is the zygote? Huh? So... Uh, on the other hand, you know, if you were, if you were weird Al, <laughs> um, if you were an algae or fungus, you'd look at our life cycle and go, what? You mean you have a multicellular diploid stage? You make your gametes by meiosis? That's crazy. And the only haploid stage in your life cycle is gametes? What? That was, we would seem weird to them. So I guess it's a matter of perspective. The plant life cycle. Hooray. Um, the best of them all. Um, is called um, the alternation of generations life cycle. Well, here's a prettier picture of that, which is basically the same stuff, but let's, why don't we just gaze at it for a while so that those of us who uh, were um, upset how scrawly my handwriting is can, um, boy, it looks exactly the same. The spores are in the same spot. Haploid, diploid. Um, okay, that was nice. Let's move along. Nothing to see here. Um, the, the plant life cycle um, is, is sometimes called the alternation of generations life cycle. I'm going to write it in here. It's called the alternation of generations life cycle. Um, instead of being haplontic, instead of being diplontic, um, back in the day before all this technology happened, we used to have these overhead projectors where you'd write on a piece of um, like acetate or plastic or something and with a felt it pen and it would project it and I would write out the animal life cycle on one of these pieces of plastic and the 
weird algae fungus life cycle on another piece of plastic and then put them over uh, superimposed on top of each other to show pretty much what the plant life cycle is because the plant life cycle combines both of those features and there are two separate stages in the life cycle that alternate and that's why it's called alternation of generations and they are called the gametophyte um, uh, and a gametophyte is, is, a, is a plant which is haploid and um, and what a haploid plant does is it produces gametes that's why it's called a gametophyte and it produces its gametes um, because it's haploid by mitosis a sporophyte we just change a few words here um, it's a diploid plant that produces spores by meiosis so it's a it, it's a spore plant it's a spore producing plant and these are the two stages in the life cycle of plants it alternates between being a um, gametophyte and a sporophyte and you could legitimately point to either one of these and say there's a plant sometimes it would be uh, not unreasonable sometimes it would be a little bit uh, like stretching it because as we will see some plants have fairly uh, robust and and developed both gametophytes and sporophytes and then uh, particularly the bryophytes but then over evolutionary time there's been a tendency for the sporophyte to become bigger compared to the gametophyte so that in flowering plants the gametophytes are only a few cells we'll see that um, but let's 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 do our beautiful um, drawing. So here's the horizontal line, above which everything is dip, and below it which everything is hap. And we're going to start at the top. We're going to draw a sporophyte. Um, this is a sporophyte, and I like to write in diploid just to reinforce that. Although there's no such thing as a haploid sporophyte. And someplace on this sporophyte's body is a structure within which spores are produced, and therefore it is called a sporangium. And unlike the zygote that underwent meiosis to produce a measly little four spores, sporangia have many, 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 many what are called spore mother cells. So there are a whole lot of spores produced by meiosis. So they have to write a lot of dots. It's kind of fun. Okay. Um, whoop, come back here, you. I gotta figure out how to make that stop happening. If I touch here, okay. Um, these are spores, which um, uh, so let's draw, let's draw the other stage in the life cycle. Big balloons, multicellular organisms, um, and once again, um, they um, aren't necessarily separate sexes. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. We'll learn about that. Ones that are separate sexes are called heterosporous or heterosporous. Ones that are not are called homosporous, homosporous. I might pronounce it that way. And um, so by mitosis. And somewhere on this organism's body is a Archegonium and an anthridium labeling arrow. Archegonium, which of course is the female gametangium. Uh, anthridium, which of course is the male gametangium. And we are producing our gametes by mitosis. And male sperm. Obligatory one going the wrong way. <laughs> and eggs. Um, which fuse together. Let's see if I can squeeze them in. I'll put them over here. A zygote. And so what we have is is whoop, is um, an alternation of the generations. Two stages in the life cycle. A sporophyte which produces spores by meiosis which develop by mitosis into haploid Gametophytes. The gametophytes have gametangia, antheridia on the males, archegonia on the females, 
to produce gametes, eggs and sperm, um, by uh, mitosis that fuse together to form a fertilized egg or zygote that developed by mitosis into a um, diploid sporophyte. And that is the, the uh, life cycle of plants. So um, there's a more elegant view of the same thing. We can admire it. You know, it's just a little neater. Nice. I have to say it's nice. Um, here is uh, what will be a nice review after we take a break and um, see the same information presented in a different way. And then um, I know what you're wondering. You're wondering, okay, I kind of get the idea of about alternative generations with circles and dots and arrows and stuff. But uh, what about actual plants? What do the actual plants look like that, that are the sporophytes and the gametophytes? And what are some examples? And that's what we'll see in our, the next episode of The Plant Kingdom.